All right, everyone, welcome back. Before we begin with the the story, we end up getting some new servant info. So let's finish up on uh, Lancer, and then we will check up on the new archer, AKA Gil. Hero info. The great hero of Ireland, then we got a hero of Bornath Lu, God of Light. I think I read this right though. So let me check his skill. Build of a draw from battle, disengage. It can also reset a losing battle back to the beginning, the first turn. Reset the conditions of a technique back to their initial value. Wow. Divinity B. Whether or not one has divine spirit aptitude, the higher it is, the more physically mixed the divine spirit one is. Uh, we saw this already. Alright, I think we can go straight to Archer. Holy crap, this guy is just cheese. Which makes perfect sense though. Alright, Gil. Part man, part god. He is a king who ruled Uruk, a city-state of Sumeria, before the Common Era. A ruler not just of legend, but who is also believed to have actually existed. He has written about in one of mankind's oldest epic poems, the Epic of Gilgamesh, a two-third divine and one-third human demigod. He is a peerless sovereign of a world and a supreme being who has obtained everything in existence. Wow. Initially, he was a tyrant who thought little of his citizens, but his behavior gradually changed after befriending Enkidu. Enkidu was a divine creation made by the goddess Aruru in response to the prayers of the people suffering under Gilgamesh's oppressive rule. Enkidu and Gilgamesh were destined to meet, and they affected one another greatly. At first, Gilgamesh feared and viewed Enkidu as an enemy, but the two soon formed a mutual bond and later worked as equals to govern the nation. The two of them also defeated the Guardian of the Forest, the divine beast Humbaba, and Gilgamesh would eventually go on to be known as the greatest king on earth, taking possession of every fortune known to man. At this point, Gilgamesh was a dazzling and powerful being that even the gods could not ignore. Ho 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 ho! The goddess fell in love with Gilgamesh. The goddess of fertility, Ishtar, proposed marriage to the perfect king, but Gilgamesh bluntly rebuffed the goddess's proposal. He did so because he knew Ishtar was a capricious and brutal witch who ruined men's lives. An angry Ishtar claimed Gilgamesh insulted her, and she sent her father anu Anu's bull of heaven to earth as retaliation. The unleashing of this unbeatable divine beast caused seven years of famine and destruction. Gilgamesh and Enkidu worked together to confront the bull of heaven and successfully defeat it further tarnishing the goddess's reputation. Ishtar's anger could not be quelled, so the goddess asked the gods for the death of either Gilgamesh or Enkidu. Reasoning that the human killing a divine beast is punishable sin, Ishtar's wishes were hurt, and Enkidu slowly wasted away until they died, as they were a creation of the gods and unable to resist their orders. This was the start of Gilgamesh's downfall. He was shocked to find that his friend, the only one who could match him in power, was just as capable of death. Gilgamesh was haunted by fear of his doom and so he set out on a journey to the underworld in search of immortality. After an arduous trek, Gilgamesh obtained the elixir of immortality. However, as he bathed en route home, a snake drank the elixir and Gilgamesh was left to die in despair. It is said that snakes are reborn to a new body each time they shed their skin because one drank Gilgamesh's elixir. Well, that's clever. Humanity's oldest king of heroes, Gilgamesh, tales of his clash with the gods, his journey to seek immortality, and a great flood over the world. Everything in his epic became the archetype and basis for all mythology. His name may not be as recognizable as Arthur or Heracles, but this comparatively nameless figure is the oldest hero king. His overwhelming power truly makes him the strongest heroic spirit. Awesome. Clash skill. Magic resistant resistance is E, protection against magecraft. It cannot nullify magic magecraft, but it simply reduces damage of a certain value. Independent action is A+, plus, a skill that allows movement even without a master. Makes perfect sense for his type of character and his uh, myth or lore. Charisma A+, plus, also makes sense for his character. The ability to command and lead large armies. With this amount of charisma, it is closer to magecraft or a curse rather than a skill representing a high esteem. This charisma matches that of Ryder from uh, Fate Zero. Divinity B or A+. Plus. He has the highest aptitude for being a divine spirit, but because he hates the gods, it has been ranked out. <laughs> wow. All right. What uh, do do? We're looking for not the golden shirt victory. I'm looking for it. No. 
Heaven Scorcher Halberd? No. I'm waiting for it. Is it named? No. No. Wow, really? Nothing. I guess that's later then. Hmm. I feel like we would have his weapon. But that's cool too. Alright, let's head back. She's decided to follow the promise she made until the very end. She doesn't even need to tell me what that means. She will never waver again. And she is more beautiful than ever. In the dark of that night, in the moment I met her under the moonlight and admired her appearance, I loved her from the very beginning. Then, regardless of what awaits ahead, there's only one thing to be done. Seba. I cut away any lingering attachment, I banish my selfishness, and say what has to be done. Saber nods reassuringly. I can't smile back at her right now. I'm trying my best to suppress my feelings for her and convince myself that this is the right thing to do. I'm sure that someday, I'll be proud she trusted me with this decision. I stand up. Now that's settled, we can't just rest here forever. We know what must be done and our enemy is clear. No more detours. Today, we put an end to this battle. I managed to make it home, leaning on Saber's shoulder. The wound in my chest hasn't completely healed. According to Saber, I'll need to lie still for a few hours. I bite my lip. I curse my body for refusing to listen to me, even though I know what I need to do now. I mean, doesn't he always? That's his shtick. I'm thinking about where Kotomine went, about how to defeat Gilgamesh. There's just so much we need to consider. For now though, we need to rest and wait until tonight. that moment, my mind freezes. There's nobody inside. The house feels different. Ah, crap. Mingled with the smell of something burning, I can just pick out the strong scent of blood. I run. I ignore my chest wound. I run to shake off the chill running down my back. I run through the corridor, turn a corner, and pass through the familiar curtain that divides one room of the house from another. And... The scene that greets me is anything but familiar. Ah, Tosaka, no! Tosaka. My voice trembles. I don't know what happened. All I know is that Tosaka is looking at me, breathing weakly. Oh, what the hell is she saying? It looks like she's really struggling even to speak, but she tries to make conversation like nothing's wrong. <laughs> Saber nods and turns to run to the bathroom. <laughs> I panic as I pull out the first aid kit. <laughs> Tosaka is panting, but she looks straight at me. Tosaka. I don't know what the hell she's trying to say. I'm confused, but I just nod to listen to what she has to say. <laughs> Oh, 
それよりごめん留守を任されてたのに私リリアを守れなかった I finally put two and two together. Tosaka wounded, the living room in disarray, and Ilya gone. She nods. He's the only enemy left, so there wasn't much point in asking. But Saber and I were the only ones who knew Kotomine was our enemy. It must have been a shock for Tosaka. The seventh master is her teacher and guardian. そうね、正直甘く見てた。自分一人でもなんとかなるって、うぬぼれてたみたい。She coughs up blood. Crap, I can't let her keep talking. 話は後にしよう。今は動くな。すぐに手当てをして、休ませてやるから。That's ominous. But I just nod. This is serious, especially if she's so insistent on telling me, even as wounded as she is. I couldn't stop her from speaking up now, even if I wanted to. まず一つ目、コトミネの目的はイリアよ。あの子が今回の聖杯の器だって、あいつは初めから知ってたんでしょうね。イリアが聖杯正確にはあの子の心臓ね。魔術師っていうのは魔術回路を持った人間だけど。イリアは魔術回路を人間にした子なのサーバントが残り一人になった時あの子自体が聖杯を下ろす器になると思うじゃあイリアはコトミネに連れて行かれたわでも<笑>セイバーがまだ健在なら。道は開かないコトミネだって器になるイリアをどうにかしようなんて考えないはずだ I can only hope so and Lancer won't be as easy a servant to beat even if he couldn't defeat Gilgamesh he might at least have been able to run away I just have to hope he did this isn't the time to tell Tosaka anyway わかったイリアは俺が助け出すから信じろそうじゃあ2つ目コトミネの居場所だけどきっと竜道寺だと思う聖杯の高齢場所としてあそこ以上の場所はないもの教会はもう引き払ってるだろうし隠れてるとしたらあの寺だから。She doesn't even seem to have the strength to move her head, but she nods in anyway. That question. She's not asking as a friend, but as a maid, she truly understands the situation. Gonna save. But still, Tosaka, let's go with this. My mind's made up. My chances of victory are abysmal. 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 Even so. Tataka. Yats ni wa kari ga yama hodo aru. Nani ga aru to hiku koto wa deki nai. Koto mi ne kirei wa. Emi ya shiro ga taosu beki teki da kara na. I need to settle things with him. As a survivor of the disaster ten years ago, as mom of the orphans, as the son of Kiritsugu Emiya. So, now, this will be. 
ご信用のものだけど何もないより役に立つわ。トシカ reaches behind her and takes out a dagger. This is a well known dagger, perhaps even famous. It is used for rituals rather than for battle. It's a magical wand in the shape of a sword used to form magic circles and to intervene in mystics that have taken shape. The word Azoth is engraved in the jewel in the handle. Its blade isn't as long as a typical dagger, which probably fits Tulsika's preferences anyway. This is the Azoth blade, a sword favored by a famous scholar of mystics who took the world by storm some time ago. It is meant for mages to prove that their training is complete. The Azoth blade is unlike the sort of gift one receives for getting into a college. Tulsika, this is. She hands me the dagger. It's surprisingly heavy. Not physically heavy, rather. I feel the weight of Tosaka's memories in the dagger. Tosaka. いいのかこれを預かっていいのよ綺麗に勝てないって分かって最後まで隠し通したんだからこのまま使わないのも尺だしあんたが使って分かった遠慮なくもらっとく正直武器は大いに越したことはないなんだ分かってるじゃないならもういいかな。いい加減、もう眠くて眠くて。She laughs embarrassed. Next thing I know, Saber standing behind me waiting to treat Tosaka. <sighs> 寝ろ寝ろ。朝になったら起こしてやるから。そしたら腹いっぱい飯食わせてやる。そうする。She looks like she said everything she wants to say, and so Tosaka drifts right off to sleep. She looks well enough, so I feel a little stupid for worrying about her. Then again, I know that's her way of cheering me on, and her words really do invigorate me. I nod at Tosaka's sleeping form. Everything's all set. All that's left is to spend in these next few hours without regret while my wounds heal. Today slowly takes over into tomorrow. We treat Tosaka's wounds and take her to the room to rest while I make dinner and eat with Saber in silence. Most of my wounds are healed. We only have about an hour or, le or two left. In the meantime, I'll spend time with Saber, report to Kiritsugu, have a strategy meeting. Okay, well, once again, we're gonna wanna. It's important. Alright, 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 alright. Strategy meeting. There's only one thing to do. We've always done it this way, so we should do the same right to the end. It's not romantic, and it's not elegant, but sitting across from each other and coming up with a plan of action suits me and Saber best. Shiro. Saber reluctantly follows into the shed. Okay now. There's a reason I had Saber go inside the shed. Right now, we have neither a plan nor the means to defeat Gilgamesh. 
So it goes without saying that we need something extra. So. Look for a weapon, strength and saber. Return the sheath to saber. I should return the sheath to its rightful owner. I don't know if it'll work, but I have to try. But Saber did manage to put her hand into my body to check whether the sheath was there. So it's probably not impossible to extract. あ、それは本気ですか、シロ。本気だよ。もともとあれはセイバーのものだろ。なら、セイバーに返すのは当然だし、この鞘があれば、あいつにだって勝てるかもしれない。Not going to lie though, I'm going to miss that chief. It's what's been healing me constantly throughout the whole damn story. 確かに、鞘が戻れば私の魔力も上がります。ですが、それでもギルガメッシュに勝てる保証はありません。それに、鞘をテキシテしてしまったら、シロはどうするのです。鞘を取ってしまえば、もう。I no longer heal so rapidly from whatever injury I might sustain. But that's normal. I relied on this regeneration too much. Nobody should be immortal. I shouldn't keep it anymore. 鞘を取ってくれ、セイバー。これは俺たちが勝つための絶対の条件だ。Saber bites her lip, not answering. I'm not sure how long this moment stretches out between us. The clouds in the sky drift by, and as the moonlight starts to shine through the window. わかりました、マスター。あなたの心をお借りします。Saber nods, her hesitation gone. それでは始めます。準備はいいですか、シロ。いいぞ。遠慮なく始めてくれ。Saber begins. Her hand presses against my chest. And sinks in. My job here is simple. The process of extracting the sheet is similar to projection. The secret sword sheath has integrated itself throughout my body. I just have to collect all the dispersed bits of it <clears throat> and reform them into the sheath. This is all just my impression of what's going on though. I may say I'm reforming into the sheath, but I'm just gathering the waves of magical energy. Saber is the one who will give it shape. She, the original owner, forms the shapeless bundle of magical energy into the sheath itself. I'm just helping her. It's like making something from nothing. The scattered pieces of the sacred sword sheath are reproduced with the precision and painstaking care, without a single error. <laughs> my body grows hot. Projection is a way beyond means. It eats away at my body every time I use it. It destroys my nerves, burns my skin, and even has the power to cripple my brain. But it's the only weapon I have, and it could be the one thing that might help Saber. I imagine. I think back to when I saw her in my dreams. The golden sheath fit for the King of Knights to carry into battle. The legendary sheath that protected its owner and led her to so many victories. I reproduced it vividly, without deviation, and as beautiful as it ever was. And, no matter the end awaiting us, I won't ever forget this. I will engrave the image in my mind. I hear Saber's voice. I feel something that was within me for the longest time escaped from my body. It must have come out great as Saber is so elated it surprises me. My body is still so searing, hot that I just topple face first into the ground. Saber hurries back toward the house. As I listen to her footsteps, I take a deep breath. I think that turned out great. It was perfect. I don't think anything else I project will ever turn out so perfect. I bid farewell to the thing that had been a part of me for so long. The golden sheet that protected her. I will never, ever forget it. Though it's left my body, <clears throat> its form has been forever engraved into my heart.
The moon hangs high in the sky. The clouds have finally cleared and the black of night is giving way to indigo. It will be dawn soon. The long night is about to end. It will be the last one. During the night, Saber and I travel to our final destination. Shiro, this... I hear the tension in Saber's voice. She's not the only one. As I quietly nod, I feel a cold sweat trickling down my neck. The mountain feels like it's a living thing. Chills run down my spine, stifling pressure assails me with every step I take. The air is thick and damp. The summoning of the Holy Grail has begun. Maybe it's even over by now. Either way, Gilgamesh has probably defeated Lancer. ギルガメッシュの相手を頼む。俺はマスター、コトミネを撃つ。お互いの戦いには手を出さない。どちらかが相手を倒せば、それで終わりだ。ええ、今回だけは私は自分の戦いに専念します。それにコトミネはあなた
I just have to chatter about insignificant stuff like before. For example, let's go to town when we go home. 